Let's now go across to the chairperson of Congress's Manifesto Drafting Committee, former Finance and Home Minister in the UPA government, P. Chidambaram, now joining us live from his constituency. Mr. Chidambaram, welcome. You know, share with our viewers your broad interpretation of the mandate for 2024. The BJP still comfortably placed to be able to form the next government along with its allies, the Congress being able to increase its tally substantially, but not being in any position to come anywhere close to having a real shot at power. What's your reading of Mandate 2024? The most benign interpretation, the most favorable interpretation to the BJP is all right, you run the government, but you will have to change your entire style, you have to change your approach, you have to abandon some extreme views and policies, and you will have to govern this country with a consensus. That is the most benign interpretation of the result. I have a, a very negative interpretation, but I won't waste your time on that. No, but let's come to all kinds of interpretations of the verdict because one way of looking at this data is that going back 35 years, not since 1989, has any government uh, come back to power with 240 seats. Uh, the BJP has the highest tally. The last uh, party that had a tally in this region was the Congress after Rajiv Gandhi's death in 1991 and the general elections in June. Uh, since Pandit Nehru's time, nobody has come back to power for a third time. So the BJP, and we heard that from uh, the Prime Minister, the BJP is claiming that this is a historic mandate and we need to look at it in a historical arc in terms of how substantial this result is given that they've been in power for 10 years now. Mr. Narsimha Rao in 1991 got about the same number. I can't recall the number, but it's about the same number as the BJP got today. But we had a coalition and we governed by consensus. If the BJP is rejecting the advice that you have to I have the govern number. by consensus, it's doing it at its peril. So I do have the number uh, from that June 91 election, 232 seats for the Congress, 36.26% vote share. So it is a fact that this is the biggest uh, tally that any party has had for the past 35 years. All right, we'll accept that. I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't dredge my memory to find the exact number. We'll accept that. But 240 is short of 272. The BJP is obliged to take on allies. It has already taken on two major allies, the Telugu Desam Party and the JDU, and it has a number of minor allies. It has to govern by consensus within the government. It has to govern by consensus between the Treasury benches and the opposition benches. Mrs. Zidamram, in what specific ways do you see the nature of governance change over the next uh, five years? We've seen the style of functioning of the Prime Minister over the last two terms of his being in office. How do you see a change from an op opposition lens? How do you see Modi 3.0 being different from what we've seen over the past 10 years? I cannot predict how the Mr. Narendra Modi will react to the new situation. He has never been part of a coalition. He has never governed by consensus. In the 12 years, he was chief minister of Gujarat. In the 10 years, he's been prime minister. He has been a one-person government. Now, whether he will change, I cannot say. And I don't wish to advise him. But I can advise the government because it's a government of India. It's a government of you. It's a government of me. It's a government of our children. So I can advise the government, you now govern by consensus. Don't trust or impose your extreme views or divisive views on the functioning of the government. But history, history, history points in another direction, but history can be altered. Uh, individuals can alter history, they alter the course of history. I sincerely wish for the good of the country, for the future of the country, any government in India 
will govern by consensus, without divisiveness, without um, rancor, without ill will, without hate. You can carry 140 crore people only so far and so fast as long as you govern by consensus. This was the strength of Mr. Narsimharao. This was the strength of Dr. Manmohan Singh. They may have made a couple of mistakes, but by and large, the five years of Mr. Narsimharao and the 10 years of Dr. Manmohan Singh were government by consensus. We've spoken about the BJP's performance. For a moment, let's speak about the Congress's performance. You know, if you go back in time, in 1989, the Congress had 197 seats. In 2004, when the Congress was seen to have done not so well, he had 145 seats. So even if you look at a longer time period, while the Congress has reached about 100 seats in this election, it still is, by the Congress's own past standards, a very poor performance. We get, uh, when we look at the last 10 years, then it looks like a substantial improvement. If you go back in time, this is one of the worst historical performance still of the Congress party. If you, if, you, if you take delight in the fact that the Congress has got less than 100 seats, you're welcome to your idea. I mean, I don't want to comment on it. Why should I comment on your personal inferences and your personal delight about the Congress's poor performance? All that we can say is, as a pre-declared alliance, the INDA alliance, we have got about 233 seats and we think it's a remarkable improvement over the performance in 2014 and 2019 after, underline the word after, after 10 years of so-called Amrit Kal. You know, I wasn't taking delight in the Congress's bad performance. I was just stating the figures uh, and placing them in a historical context. We've spoken about how you think the nature of governance will change with this bigger mandate that the opposition has, and in particular the Congress party. How do you see the nature of opposition politics change over the next five years? The same advice applies to the opposition also, including my party. We have to function as a constructive opposition a vigilant opposition and a trenchant opposition in the parliament. We have to hold the government to account. So far, whenever we have tried to hold the government to account, we were uh, simply uh, bulldozed or steamrollered by the presiding officers and the brute majority enjoyed by the BJP. That cannot go on now. For example, the committees of parliament will be more balanced more chairs of the committees will be available to the opposition benches. And, for example, in the last several years, at least last five years, and maybe more, not a single adjournment motion has been admitted by either presiding officer, at least as far as Rajya Sabha is concerned. Now we will move adjournment motions, we will move cut motions, we will move call attention notices, and you can't simply brush aside the opposition's uh, trying to set part of the agenda. I'm not saying the opposition sh should set the agenda, but let's follow the British practice. We have promised it in the Congress manifesto. One sure. day in a week, the substantive discussion must be on a subject chosen by the opposition. I'm only asking one day in a week. Let's spend a moment on the BJP's performance in the South, along with uh, their partners, the TDP and the JSP. In Andhra Pradesh, the BJP now is in government. In Telangana, the party has been able to increase its seat share substantially. The BRS has collapsed. In Karnataka, while the party has come down a few notches, but given the fact that it's the Congress that's in power, the BJP is still the number one party. In Kerala, they've opened their account, and in Tamil Nadu, they've increased their vote share about 2.5%. So the improvement of the BJP's performance in the South seems to be one of their big achievements in this election. How do you look at this and the Congress's efforts to try and thwart the BJP's growth in the South? I'm sorry, take it in a good spirit. Your channel has a way of interpreting numbers, which is incorrect. We saw that two days ago, but be that as it may. <laughs> the BJP's vote share in Tamil Nadu is not as BJP. 
the BJP took on two allies, one whose head passed away recently, and there was a huge, um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, one uh, ally, the PMK, which is a, uh, we, we all know is a very sectarian party. Now that brought it a large number of votes from a particular community. Uh, I don't wish to say more about that. So that vote is not a BJP vote. It's a sectarian vote. It always goes to that party. Whichever party that allies with it, the vote goes to that. So that is not a permanent vote bank or a vote strength of the BJP. The BJP's vote strength, according to me, is certainly limited. It may have increased uh, from the last election. I don't deny that. But it has not tripled or increased substantially. BJP is still a very low, um, uh, credible party in Tamil Nadu. Let's spend a moment on the results from Uttar Pradesh, India's uh, biggest state by seats. In Uttar Pradesh, uh, the BJP style has come down substantially. The Congress has found a toehold. Uh, the big story, though, seems to be the BSP's vote share coming down by half and uh, once again not picking up any seats. It seems that there's been a shift of Dalit votes away from uh, the BSP towards the India alliance, particularly on account of the fact that the Congress was on the same ticket as the Samajwadi party. Are you hoping that this signals a larger shift in Dalit vote and the Congress once again becomes a magnet for the scheduled caste, not just in Uttar Pradesh, but in other parts as well, Mr. Zemba? No, no, I don't want to comment on the BSP's future. Obviously, when uh, the BSP, I, I suppose you're referring to the uh, Bahujan Samaj party, isn't it? Ah, the Bahujan Samaj party yes, was absolutely. never a serious player in this election. From the day one, it was a reluctant entry, entrant, and uh, Miss Mayavati did not uh, throw herself uh, full into the campaign. As a result, as a result, it's expected, its uh, core vote bank has shifted. Now, who it has shifted to, I cannot come to any instant conclusions. Clearly, a significant section of her vote bank has shifted to the uh, SP and Congress alliance, which we welcome. Finally, Mrs. Chidambaram, do you see this government last out its full term? There will be some pockets of mid-air turbulence. Uh, do you think that the Prime Minister will be able to adapt and adjust to a different style of functioning? Or are you, in fact, hoping that there is so much mid-air turbulence that the plane in the government's plane needs to take a uh, land needs to land somewhere midterm and then there are fresh elections or maybe some other power party in formation comes to power what's your sense will this government last its full term i think the india bloc took a very wise decision a very measured decision yesterday and i think they have spelt it out in so many words so let's not uh, uh, second guess the india bloc's decision now about, what the, about the longevity of the uh, Modi government, it's entirely in his hands. You see, we have, he has two mercurial partners. That's the best way, uh, word I can uh, use to describe both um, uh, the Honorable Chief Minister of Bihar, Mr. Nitish Kumar, and the Honorable Chief Minister designate of Andhra Pradesh, uh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu. Both are mercurial uh, uh, players. They have been part of a coalition and left the coalition of a BJP coalition. Uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar was part of a BJP coalition, walked out. Mr. Uh, Babu uh, was part of Mr. Vajpayee's government, he walked out. Therefore, they are quite sensitive and they are a capable of taking their own decisions. Therefore, it's the way the Mr. Narendra Modi, as Honorable Prime Minister, uh, will be, in a, uh, runs the government. If he runs by consensus, uh, there's no reason why the government should not last. Uh, he, if he runs by consensus, uh, why should we wish him ill? 
Because after all, he is the government of India. He will be the Prime Minister of India. But whether he will run by consensus, uh, it's uh, uh, your guess is as good as mine, or my guess is as good as yours. Mr. Chidambaram, thank you uh, for taking out time to join us. It will be interesting to see how a new equilibrium gets established in Indian politics, but it's always interesting to hear your thoughts. So we appreciate you taking out time uh, for joining us. Thank you very much.